First to the north of the state, where there's a growing backlash over plans to close up to 150 remote Aboriginal communities. There are concerns the closures will see hundreds of people pour into Kimberley towns, leading to homelessness and alcohol problems. Well, that's already happening in the town of Broome, which is currently struggling to cope with a growing homeless population and a wave of drunken violence. Community leaders there say the situation is at crisis point, but is anyone listening? Erin Park reports. A warm afternoon in Broome, and the Kalari bus is roaming the streets looking for drugs. Just drive around, I guess, um, just to, well, pick up some intoxicated people, you know, take them back home safely. Their goal is to keep people out of trouble and take them somewhere safe. But in a town famed for five star resorts, safe places are hard to find. Do they take them home to somewhere where there's already 18 people living in a house where there's social dysfunction there or put, where you put children at risk when you've got drunken people turning up? You shouldn't, but where do you send them to? Most of our people just they sleep anywhere. They're yeah. homeless. Homeless. The Kalari Patrol has made 27,000 pickups in the last 18 months. This is the flip side of idyllic Broome. More than 100 homeless people living in squalid bush camps around town. Aboriginal people have been moving around the Kimberley and gathering in large towns for decades. Some are here to visit family, others to receive medical attention, some to escape the wet season flooding. But what's changed is the number of people drifting into Broome. We have just experienced a significant increase in demand for services particularly our homeless breakfast and our emergency relief services. Michael King runs local support service Centrecare. With most hotels priced for the upmarket tourist trade, sometimes all he can offer is a tent and a food voucher. Sleeping rough, you know, does come with its dangers. You know, we're very, very aware that physical and sexual assault does occur. A recent Centrecare survey of rough sleepers found only 8% saw alcohol as their main reason for coming to Broome. But Michael is worried the grog fueled behaviour of a few people is detracting from the real issue. We need to be mindful and respectful that there are legitimate homeless people who are a part of that group. We have a bushfire and tent and everything. Carol Cox is happy to admit that she came here to drink. She left her home in the small Fitzroy Valley community of Yearly two years ago. We came here, you know, because I'm restricting and fit and horse fit, not beer. She says she can't afford Broome's high rents and the waiting list for public housing is long, so she camps on a bush block in the centre of town. We, we want to support every hostel in Broome. Aboriginal hostel, I'm so going to rent to stay if the cyclone come. Local business owner Mike Windle, who's run bars and restaurants in Broome for 30 years, says the antisocial behaviour is damaging the town's tourism brand. There's a lot of tourists, they've, uh, they've said to people they won't be coming back here, they've seen it all. You know, they walk past, they get abused in the streets and, and uh, the language is, uh, you can't get much worse. One restaurateur's recently cut back his opening hours because diners are being harassed by drunks. Mike Windle says things have got worse since liquor restrictions were introduced in the central Kimberley. Unfortunately, they've all moved down here and that is your problem. They haven't cured the problem, all they've done is shift the problem. At a local park, a group of women from the desert communities of Mullen and Balgo are gathering for the evening. It's drinking and talking, it's yeah. competition, Family, no, no fighting, no fighting. Happy, happy drinking and all that. Yeah. But later in the night, does it sometimes get a bit rough? Get a bit rough in that later in the night, yeah. The Kalari Patrol has picked up 80 people in a few hours and things are starting to get rough. The team in the bus have got a call out to the Broome Visitor Centre to collect a man and a woman. We've arrived though and there's a man walking around carrying a large knife. Um, there are no police around and it's not clear if he wanted a lift or not, so uh, we're not quite sure what's happening at the moment. Apart from that incident, it's been a relatively peaceful shift. Hello! What happened? 
But three days after we joined the patrol, it was caught in the middle of what police describe as the worst violence they've seen in Broome in years. One policeman would run over her and just started all the family, OK? I saw police running across the road um, with about 50 Aboriginal people running after them. And then um, I end up calling the police back again, saying, hey, there's World War Three down here, you better get more down here. That lady over there, she get run over. Over the last few years, I've increased the number of police in the Broome area, and our, our tasking hasn't gone down. Our uh, arrest rate hasn't gone down. So even with extra police, um, this seems to be getting a bigger and bigger problem. Local police are frustrated. I'm sick of talking. Um, for four and a half years that I've been back here, uh, we've done a lot of talking and there's a lot of people come and have some sort of initiatives, but I think it's time for some action from around the town. Sooner or later, somebody is going to get killed because of this and then the finger pointing will start. Broom leaders say the situation has reached crisis point. People defecating in full public, fornicating in public, uh, there's been some instances of that, laying naked in the public arena, that is not acceptable behaviour anywhere. Aboriginal leaders are also worried. Because we see a lot of antisocial uh, behaviour that's happening in the town of Broome and it makes us as Aboriginal people feel really bad. Kimberley MP Josie Farrah wants the state government to build a hostel in Broome. If we can't get this government to, to see that, then there's something wrong with this whole system. In 2010, the state government did commit the funds for a hostel where people could pay $20 a night for a safe place to sleep. But the project was shifted to Derby, two hours drive away, because the Broome Shire and the government couldn't agree on a location. Shire President Graham Campbell says an organised campsite for homeless people is now the top priority. Now it's not going to be the, the panacea and the saviour, but at least these people uh, uh, will, will have basic form of uh, accommodation. Centrecare is trying to arrange bus and plane tickets to get people home. But its recent survey found almost a third of the rough sleepers don't want to return to the bush. The problem isn't going away. And with the state government considering shutting dozens of remote communities, it's likely to get worse. They'll end up in the streets in Broome or, or Derby or Fitzroy or Halls Creek or Cunanara or Wyndham. What will the government do about that? Do nothing. You've got people at, at real risk uh, of dying. Do nothing. You've got the real risk of people getting killed.